Hi. Now, in the first part of this question, we had to calculate the velocity of sea immediately after this collision, which we worked out was 3.1 meters per second. So I've updated the diagram with that value. Now, in this next part, we're told that at time t seconds after this collision, the velocity v meters per second of c is given by this formula here, v equals v subscript 0 minus 3t squared. For t greater than 0, but less than or equal to 0 0.3. And c strikes r when t equals 0 0.3. And for this second part of the question, then, in part A, we've got to state the value of V with the subscript 0. And then go on in part B to calculate the distance C moves before it strikes R. And then in the third part, find the acceleration of C immediately before it strikes R. So if you'd like to have a go at any of these parts, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, I'll run through the work solution. OK, welcome back. Let's see how you got on, if you had a go. Well, for the first part, part A, then, it says state the value of V with the subscript 0 here, so it's got to be fairly obvious. So it is, actually, because at the start, T would be equal to 0. And when T equals 0, V would equal V0. And at the start, the velocity was 3.1 meters per second. So let's just write that in that when t equals 0, OK, what we've got is that v equals v with the subscript 0, and it equals 3.1. All right, so dead easy, that one. Now in part b, we've got to calculate the distance that c moves before it strikes r. And to do this, we should be familiar with the fact that if you're trying to work out a distance when you're given a velocity as a function of time, then that distance is equal to the integral of the velocity with respect to time. And for this problem, the time is going from 0 to 0 0.3 when it hits r. So it's just a question now of substituting our values in and working out what that integral is. So what we've got here then is therefore the distance is equal to the integral going from 0 to 0 0.3 of v. Now that's v with zero, v subscript 0, so that's 3.1. So just pop that in as 3.1 now, minus... 3t squared. And we're integrating that all with respect to time. And if we integrate this in the usual way, what we've got here is 3.1t, and then integral of minus 3t squared. If we add 1 to the power, that would be t cubed. Divide it by 3, and the 3's cancel, just leaving you with t cubed. And this is evaluated then between the limits 0 and 0 0.3. So we need to substitute our limits in. So we start with 0 0.3 for t. So we've got 3.1 multiplied by 0 0.3 and then minus, and here we'll have 0 0.3 all cubed. And then with, from this we would subtract what we get when we put the lower limit, 0, in. But when you put 0 in, both these terms are going to be 0. So we're just left with this calculation here. And if you work that out, it comes to 0 0.903. 0 0.903 metres. OK, so that's part B. Now, in the last part, part C then, what we've got to do now is to find the acceleration of C immediately before it strikes R. So if we've got the equation for velocity, then to get acceleration, acceleration is defined as the rate of change of velocity. So acceleration, let's say we define it as A, is equal to dV 
by dt, the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And I can see that this is a constant, so if we differentiate the constant, that's going to go to zero. If I differentiate minus 3t squared with respect to t, that's going to be minus 6t. Okay? Now, we know that when c strikes r, the time is 0 0.3. So we just got to say that when t equals 0 0.3, then the acceleration a is going to be equal to minus 6 multiplied by 0 0.3. And we've got a negative value, and it's minus 1.8, showing us that it is slowing down. Don't forget the units, though. It's minus 1.8 meters per second per second.